Welcome, good afternoon, bienvenido, buena tarde. Me llamo Ned Allen Parker. I'm Ned Allen Parker, Associate Dean of Andover Newton Seminary at Yale Divinity School. And it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome you all in person. In person, can you believe it? We've been waiting two years for this moment. Sometimes good things come to those who wait. Amen? Oh, take off my mask. Thank you. Some housekeeping really quickly. Um, please set your phones to their most prayerful position. Um, there are all gender restrooms and accessible restrooms, both to the right, my right, through those two doors, and um, there are all gender and accessible restrooms through that door over there. And for those of you tuning in from home, uh, you're on your own. Um, a special note of thanks. None of this, none of this, none of this would have been possible without the meticulous planning of Tracy Edwards. Tracy is Andover Newton's Senior Executive Administrative Assistant. It feels, honestly, it feels somehow more complicated to move things back in person and hybrid than it did to move everything online two years ago. And Tracy has worked with just about every single office on Yale University's campus and some offices from off of Yale University's campus. Um, and we're just really grateful, Tracy, that you are helping us follow all the right protocols and keeping us all safe, so thank you. We also lift up Dean Sarah Drummond and Trustee Abner Cotobonilla, who were both hoping to be here today but are feeling unwell. Dean Drummond and Reverend Cotobonilla, we send healing prayers your way. I know Rose Costas and her family are watching now, or plan to watch the recording, Rose, we send you so much love yeah. and gratitude. You are one of the great treasures of La Familia de Andover Newton, and we thank you once again for your years of service to our institution, to this beloved community. Thank you, Rose. You are a blessing from God. Gloria a Dios. In a moment, we'll hear from current student, Pastor Edwin Perez, who will offer an opening prayer and a few words about bomba music, our topic for the day. And following Pastor Perez, we'll hear from YDS MDiv graduate and Andover Newton diploma recipient, Reverend Jaquan Beecham, who is Andover Newton's Director of Community Development and Spiritual Formation. Say all that three times fast. Reverend Beecham, Reverend Beecham will share a few words about the life and work of Orlando Costas, liberation theologian and former dean of Andover Newton Theological School. Following Reverend Beecham's presentation, we'll turn it over to our very special guests from MCAC. And finally, after the presentation and music and dance lessons, I will close us in a brief benediction. And I will be writing said benediction during the dance lessons because Dean Drummond told me I wasn't allowed to dance on camera. So anyway, I'll be working on that while y'all are learning how to dance. Andover Newton's mission, deeply rooted in Christian faith and radically open to what God is doing now, Andover Newton Seminary at Yale Divinity School educates inspiring leaders for faith communities radically open to what God is doing now. Sometimes what God is up to now, justice, hope, love, resistance, liberation, learning to do a new thing is best learned from those who have, become, who have come before, from our ancestors, our grandparents, abuelos, abuelas. We learn not only to understand, but to be inspired by that understanding and then put our faith into action. So today, some of us learn a new thing that is actually not so new, but instead deeply rooted in tradition. So let us sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Canten al Señor una nueva canción. 
que todo el mundo cante al Señor. Amén. Again, thank you all for being here. It is good to be with you. Pastor Edwin. I only have but three words before I pray, and those three words are, Bomba is liberation. So I invite you to pray with me as I pray in my native tongue in Spanish. Let us bow our heads. Gran poder y misterio que llamamos Dios. Te doy las gracias por este espacio, te doy las gracias por este batey. Te doy las gracias por unir a tu pueblo y a aquellos amiga, a aquellas amigas, a aquellos amigos, amigas que les están sintonizando en este momento para aprender. Porque sabemos que hay muchas maneras en que nosotros podemos aprender. La academia no es el único lugar que puede enseñar. Sabemos también que Aparte del contemplar y la meditación, podemos conocerte mediante el movimiento. Así que, amén y hace. Hola. I will now share a brief word of the life and legacy of Orlando Costas. Orlando Costas was born in Puerto Rico in 1942 to Methodist parents. Costas grew up going to a local Baptist elementary school and was nurtured by various church communities near his home in Puerto Rico. At 12 years old, his father immigrated to the United States to find work, and Costas joined him first in New York, and then eventually settling in Bridgeport, Connecticut. During this time, his sense of mission began to be shaped strongly by the stark contrast between his childhood in Puerto Rico and the reality of his life as an immigrant in a racist and often hostile American society. This sense of differing realities fueled Costas' call to serve and his work as a Christian, a theologian, and mentor. His theological grounding focused on the liberation of the poor, of the oppressed, of the hungry, and of the humiliated. And these were an emphasis of his work later in life as a minister, scholar, and the academic dean of Andover Newton Theological School. Costa served churches in Bridgeport, Brooklyn, and Long Island, all while pursuing his studies. In 1962, he married his wife, Rosa, Rose, and together they soon had two daughters. After his marriage, Costas returned to Puerto Rico, where he continued his studies at the Universidad Intraamericana and pastored a church in Yauco. In February of 1965, he was ordained as a minister of the American Baptist Churches of Puerto Rico. Over the course of the next two decades, Costa spent time pastoring a church in Milwaukee, working for the Latin American Mission in Costa Rica, doing missionary work for the World Board of Missions of the United Church of Christ, and teaching missiology and Hispanic Studies at Eastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Philadelphia. During this time, he also found the time to write several books on homiletics, evangelism, church growth, and missiology. And then in 1984, Costas was appointed the academic dean of Andover Newton Theological School and continued his work in providing opportunities for theological studies for minority students. During his time at Andover Newton, Costas forged programs with key Latinx leaders and students in order to fashion a program of partnerships and study that would fit to their specific needs. Eventually, these efforts led to the development of an official Latinx program 
of study at Andover Newton that began in 1989 and now continues in this annual lecture. In 1987, unfortunately, Costas died after a brief fight with an aggressive form of cancer. Though his life was short, his contributions to making theological education accessible to minority communities has been recognized internationally, and his efforts to mobilize different denominations to work against oppression has left an impact that is still seen today. And so now, without further ado, help us welcome our special guests this afternoon, La Movimiento Cultural. Bienvenidos. Good afternoon, everyone. We want to thank Yale Divinity School for the opportunity to bring to you Bomba Puerto Riqueña. Uh, my name is Kevin Dia. I'm the founder and director of Movimiento Cultural. We are a nonprofit grassroots group located in Fur Haven, and I've been in involved with Bomba for the last 30 years. Uh, please allow me to acknowledge some of our supporters, like Connecticut Humanity, the State of Connecticut Office of the Arts, the City of New Haven Arts, Culture, and Tourism Office, and also the Greater New Haven Arts Council. Uh, we all know that we've been through pandemic times, and they were in support of us for our programming and educational workshops in the neighborhood. So I thank you for them. And of course, Yale University as well. Uh, so when we talk about bomba, how many of you have heard bomba? How many of you have danced bomba? Probably 15 or 20 years ago, if I asked that question, no hands will be <laughs> showed up. So. Uh, Bomba is over 400 years old, and it was brought by enslaved Africans to the island. Uh, they used Bomba to communicate among themselves, also to plan revolts and to plan escapes. Uh, but mainly, Bomba served as a catharsis to mitigate the cruel treatment that they were subject to. Uh, therefore, we call it music of resistance, music of healing, music of liberation. We fast forward, why is Bomba so popular today? People ask. We, we fast forward to today, and in 2017, Hurricane Maria devastated the island with no communication tower and no electricity. Uh, that kind of, the young people focus into Bomba because they had nothing else to do. They weren't busy on their phones, right? So. Uh, another, another element that happened was the economic crisis, the meltdown of the ec economic crisis in Puerto Rico that forced the governor to uh, resign. And again, Bomba became music of resistance through our young generation. Um, I remember with Movimiento Cultural, a lot of the migrated Puerto Ricans were dying to find Bomba. And, and, they, they came to Movimiento, oh, thank God that you guys are here because they wanted to continue. So that's kind of the short story of Bomba. And uh, the first rhythm that we're going to play is called Yuba. And the rhythm has to do, traditionally is known to release negative emotions. Uh, listen to that strong beat of the Yuba rhythm. And uh, we'll continue the program and we'll have an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the instruments and what does bomba mean? Thank you. Con el eco de mis barriles, con el eco de mis barriles, con el eco. 
abajo de mis barriles Calmo la pena que me persigue Con el eco de mi from Africa so basically and we have we can have two or three more drums they're called buriadores and this one is called primo for premier the principal and it has a higher pitch the other ones have a lower pitch and keep a steady tempo uh, now less important we have the clock which are the two sticks and in the past they used to hit it on the side of the drum so now it's a little bit more practical to hit on a little smaller of quad. Sometimes we use a bamboo that we used to play. We have the singer with the maraca, the girl that also established the tempo. And we have several rhythms. That was a juá. We have sita, we have cuembe, we have holandé, and seis corrido that comes from, that is from Loisa, uh, the northeast part of Puerto Rico where that town has retained over 90% of their African heritage. So, and if you ever visit Loisa, you'll see a big three-day festival like they do. They play a lot of them. So, 
We continue with our program. Our next song. What's our next song? We have, and just to a little bit, I'll, I'll mention all the names, but Jessica Flores, a third generation of, uh, from the town of Guayama. Uh, God bless him, his, his grandfather is 90 something and he still dances bomba. So, and she's, uh, she's not only an excellent dancer, she writes her own songs and, she, and her own poetry. So we're very proud of having her. En la bomba yo nací, en la bomba yo me crié, con mi familia por el niño da la bomba que vive en mí. gathers. Bomba is really a community event. It's about gathering. Everybody plays a part because we're playing, they're dancing and singing, but the people around us, what we call El Bate, which is a Taino Indian uh, name for a uh, word for, for a space, a safe space of gathering. So there's a protocol, so they'll know if you know Bomba. And, and usually the protocol of dancing Bomba is you come out, you establish, you let everybody know that it's your turn to dance, and that's why they circle around. And then they salute the primo, the primo drum, because I'm gonna respond to them. So when we do this, 
we say whoever's on the dance floor is in charge. It's not the other way around that I throw piquetes or I throw uh, percussions and then she tries to imitate. It's the other way I try to follow her. Any movement that she does, I have to kind of imitate it with a, with a piquete, if it's what it's called. So we always say that when you're in a bate, you're the boss, you're in charge. <laughs> so in the same way, when they're done, they salute to let them know we're leaving, and then they circle around, and then the next dancer comes in. And because each rhythm and each song speaks of emotions, uh, I might play one song and you said, okay, but when I play another song, another rhythm, you're gonna say, that's my song. I have to go in and dance. So that's the nonverbal communication for the woman. And what we just played, we play a juba, we just play a sika, and now we're gonna play one of our rimo from Loisa. This is from Loisa. It's uh, Seis Corrido. It's called Seis Corrido. It's, it's a little bit slower uh, uh, because the song calls for a slower tempo. But if you ever go to Loisa, you'll see how fast. The, the, one of the fastest rhythms that they play when they drum. Play in there. Que brinca por los palacios, que abo dentro de una olla, de bandazo entre las mallas.
have our next song. And that was the Seis Corrido of Loisa. As you see, we play it a lot slower, but if you go to the town of Loisa, especially around July when they do the Fiesta de Santiago Apostol, uh, you'll see a lot of bomba everywhere. Kids gather around the beach or everywhere you go to the businesses, everybody's playing and dancing bomba. Now we go with Quembe. Quembe is another rhythm, and it's more of a slower rhythm. It's more of a posture rhythm, and it's called another song written by Jessica Don Miguel. this up on YouTube, but uh, part of, the, of what Movimiento has been doing is documenting Bomba in, in New Haven, in Connecticut. Uh, and it started back in the 70s, mid-70s, by a group of Loisenos, people from Loisa. Uh, remember reading the newspaper and it mentioned on the green doing the Fiesta de San Juan, and the last Sunday was dedicated to Loisa there. Festival. So the Fiesta de Loisa grew out of that. 
and they were celebrating every year. They started in the hill, then they moved to Fur Haven, then they moved to Long Wharf. And you see all the vendors, trucks, and Long Wharf, but when they used to do a three-day live festival, music, arts and craft, uh, mayor bands, and always close with bomba. When you see that, when you see today all the trucks, that's a, we used to pack all that places with food vendors, so somebody got the idea, oh, we can make this permanent uh, food location. So that's the result back from the 90s when I was involved with it. So, uh, and it attracted uh, thousands of people to the festival. And it was convenient because when we drove 95, they saw the amusement ride, they saw the stage, they saw all the food, and everybody automatically was uh, stopped. Today we have a, a group that grew out of that. They're young people, and they call it Puerto Rican United, and they're also doing a festival in the green, a one-day festival, continuing that celebration of their heritage. So our next song is Sarah. And this is also a Kwembe, but it's a faster tempo. <laughs> Ay María te ha sido, le dijo a Pablo Lin, Pablo Lin, dime si te queda o te va. Pablo Lin, dime si te queda o te va. Si te queda, si te queda, si te queda. Pablo Lin.
So now Jasmine is going to sing a medley of Sika. And this is where I know I see some moving feet and hands. So this is when you guys get an opportunity to try Bomba. Uh, our master artist, Jessica, will teach you the basics. And we're going to go easy on you guys. So at least you learn the basics. <laughs> Cuando no te ven dolores, cuando no te ve, que mis ojos lloran dolores, cuando no te ve, cuando no te ven dolores, cuando no te ve, que mis ojos lloran dolores, cuando no te ve, fui a buscarte en la bomba, casa de los
who came to the bate. We give you a hand too because you were brave and you did it. <laughs> Imagine when we play bomba, we go on for hours and hours. So, uh, And it kind of what we saw here, people, even if you've experienced in bomba for the first time, you've compelled to come in and move. So uh, I want to give a shout out to our group, amazing bomberos and bomberas that we have here, starting with Aqua, Reinaldo Cruz. We have Samuel Diaz III, professional, professional percussionist. We have from Loisa, Alex Rosado. And like I said, these amazing bombera singer, dancers, they do everything. Jessica Flores. <laughs> Sara Derbala. <laughs> and Jasmine Vega. <laughs> Jasmine and Sara were taking classes of bomba when they were maybe. And Jessica, when they started, when we had the Fiesta de Loisa, Jessica was 10. So, so what we say is we become bomba practitioners. Once, once this touches you, and, and, and it has, and I have to clarify because there's a lot of misconception. This is pure culture. This is no tied into any religion. Uh, unfortunately, some people post things on YouTube confusing the issue, but it's, it's secular, it's, it's from 
what we call el pueblo. It's from the community. This is our gathering, and this is the way we celebrate in our community. And it's been around for 400 years, so we hope to pass it to the new generation yeah. so it never dies. So thank you. If you guys have any questions, please, you know, please. But we really appreciate uh, you inviting us here. Uh, tomorrow, if you want to see more, we're going to be at Wooster Square with the Sherry Blossom Festival starting around 1 o'clock. So I think we go on around 2. So if you want a little bit of more. And in May, we're going to start some community free workshops for Bomba right in Fur Haven. Uh, we're trying to secure a location. We don't have, we're grassroots, so we don't have a building or office, but uh, we, we're generous in kind from the city and other uh, agencies in Fairhaven that lends us the place. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have fun. Visit us. We have Movimiento Cultural CT.org. You can drop us a note or, or any questions that you have, we can, we'll get back to you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Tracy Edwards. Ned Parker for making this happen. I know we worked on it for a couple of years and finally things are opening up. We were able to come here and do this. Yes. Um, we have our Instagram too, movimiento underscore cultural. <laughs> and Facebook too. And there's a whole industry like the Maraca. This is a famous artisan in Puerto Rico and she'll, she'll make, if you send her your picture, she'll plasma it right on the maraca, so <coughs> any drawings or any pictures. So. Simple ones. Mm. Yeah. 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 Instagram? Movimiento underscore cultural. Okay. Movimiento cultural. Movimiento M O V. M O V I M I E N T O underscore and cultural. C U L T U R A L. In English, it's really a uh, cultural movement. Yeah. Movement. Cultural. cultural movement. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So it's my, my job to offer a, a blessing or a benediction, and I'm not sure that there is any greater blessing than we just received. Um, there isn't any greater blessing. Benediction, however, it just simply means good word, and I'll give you three. Bomba is liberation. Thank you for this taste of liberation. Thank you very much, and thank you. Thank you to all who are online. Thank you to you who are here in person. Thank you.